I didn't say that. I yeah, said it and more. No, I didn't. Yeah, There's please. more going on here than meets the eye, and less happening here than was promised. How the two are related on The Uptake Investigates. This is a story about transparency and accessibility, two very important things in our political system. Without accessibility, we can't ask the hard questions that need to be answered. Without transparency, we can't trust the answers that we get. For example, I'm about to tell you a story about Republican Congressman John Klein. Now, if I didn't tell you that I was a supporter and sometimes volunteer for his Democratic opponent, Steve Sarvey, that would not be transparent. Transparency was at the heart of Klein's opening salvo against his Democratic opponent last election cycle. This flyer accused Colleen Raleigh of, quote, playing dirty tricks when one of her volunteers tried to get on Klein's mailing list and didn't identify himself as a volunteer for Raleigh. Yeah, right. Well, I'm saying here's the right. This is the woman whose word the advertisement was based upon. Diana Brantley was staffing the Klein campaign office when the volunteer, David Bailey, asked to be on the list. She wrote that Bailey used, quote, false pretenses and deception to misrepresent himself. Fast forward to this election cycle, Klein's new opponent, Democrat Steve Sarvey, holds a news conference about how high gas prices are forcing a local gravel pit operator to lay off people. Bradley was there and didn't reveal her history with the Klein campaign before she went in front of the TV cameras and started arguing with Sarvey about oil drilling in Alaska. I just don't think we should be drilling. So you don't want to drill, you don't want any oil exploration whatsoever anywhere? I didn't say that. She was trying to get Sarvey to say that he was against all oil drilling and even claimed he had done so when our videotape showed that not to be the case. Gosh, I stood right there and I watched him say no. And I said, nowhere? You wouldn't drill anywhere? And he said no. No, he said he wouldn't drill in Alaska. So you don't want to drill, you don't want any oil exploration whatsoever anywhere? I didn't say that. I yeah, said you did. it and more. No, I didn't. Yeah, well, you said. Words in his mouth. So is this just a case of somebody in the heat of the moment forgetting to reveal that they work for the other campaign? Or was it a planned ambush? I say working for because while Diana Bratley did reveal to Steve Sarvey that she is a Republican, a longtime Republican, what she didn't reveal is that she's also a longtime Klein volunteer. And as a volunteer, she also makes thousands of dollars every year as a paid Klein campaign consultant. Bratley and her husband own a company called Family Celebrations that operates out of their house in Lakeville. Since 2004, the Klein campaign has regularly bought research services from Bratley's company. Klein's payments to Bratley's company started in April 2004 with $5,385 for analysis and conversion of database, followed by another payment of $6,450 in August and $7,925 in November. In 2005, Klein paid her company $10,000 for research, another $12,000 in 2006, and as recently as April of last year, Klein paid her company $3,000. Total so far, more than $50,000. Ironically, Bratley once wrote a letter to the editor accusing Democratic letter writers of being on the candidate's payroll. This was, of course, a few months after her company billed John Klein's campaign for $10,000, and a few months before her company billed John Klein for $12,000 more. Bratley was being paid by Klein when she was involved with other activities designed to disrupt Klein's opponent's campaign. She was with John Klein's district manager, Mike Oskop, when he attempted to disrupt a campaign rally by yelling racial slurs at cars as they pulled into a parking lot. Camp car, turn off! Camp car! <laughs> Their buddies are supporting all these Jap and German cars! Mike Oskop later apologized for his remarks. Klein's opponent, Steve Sarvey, has been giving people such as Bratley plenty of opportunities to ask him questions, holding more than a dozen pre-announced question and answer events in the first week of the campaign alone. However, John Klein has been reluctant to do so in an uncontrolled situation. This is Klein at his last open face-to-face -face meeting with constituents. He did it only after hundreds of people signed a petition requesting it. You can see why he might be hesitant to do another. The topic was making college tuition more affordable. And so I'm looking for solutions. If you've got one, I'd love to hear about it. Would you like to ask some Yes. All right, well, maybe we can roll back the tax cuts on the very small pieces. 
Klein's office promised many more meetings like that one. Since it happened more than a year ago, Klein has not lived up to that promise. Hello, this is your Congressman John Klein calling to invite you to participate in a live town hall meeting being conducted right now over the telephone. Instead, holding teletown hall meetings where residents are randomly chosen to listen to Klein answer questions on a phone call. I'm sorry that I was unable to reach you. Constituents are given no prior notice that Klein is calling, so there is little time to prepare any questions. So why doesn't John Klein have more press conferences and answer questions like his opponent Steve Sarvey does? I asked Klein's paid consultant, Diana Bratley, about that, and she said, quote, since Klein has a record, he doesn't have to do that. For The Uptake, I'm Mike McEntee.